Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and welcome back to the Unreal Engine 4 RPG series. In today's video we have got something really interesting for you guys and that is that we're going to be creating regenerating health and regenerating mana. Now both of these regenerating health and manas are actually going to be based on a variable that we're going to be creating for a sort of regen rate that we can use later on. So that regen rate is going to come later on from like the weapons and the armor and so on that the character has equipped. And we're going to have like a talent tree and everything later on in the series. But for now we're going to be focusing on that regenerating health and armor. It's a really cool system to set up and I can't wait to get into it with you guys. So first things first then to set it up. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up our third person character blueprint. So for me that's inside a third person BP blueprints and then just open up your third person character. Once that's open we are just going to be playing around with the variables to um, just increase the health and we're going to be doing that over time. So as soon as my third person character is opened up and it's loaded up on my screen I can start doing all of that with my blueprints. So give it a second and we'll get straight into it. Okay, so it's all loaded up for us now and we can actually get into creating the regenerating health and mana. It's really simple to do, so what I'm going to see is make sure I've still got my health and mana variables from the previous episodes, which is all good. If you haven't actually got those, make sure you do go back in the series and see exactly how we created these. So what I'm going to do then is I'm actually going to right click in my event graph and I'm simply going to use the event tick node to pretty much cast a delay and then make some changes to our health and, var uh, health and mana variables over time. So what I'm going to do first things first is I'm going to create a sequence node. This sequence node is just going to allow us to use uh, more than one sequence of events out of this tick because we are going to use tick quite often. So what we're going to do is I am going to get my then one and then from this I'm not going to immediately change the health and the mana instead I'm going to check to see whether or not they've already got full health or mana so what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if um, integer sorry float and then what we're looking for is greater than or equal to so sorry is less than we are after so you want to see if it is less than the maximum value which is going to be 100 so what we're going to do is simply type in our 100 percent value which is one and then the value that we're going to start off with is going to be our health one so from here if we now drop this in what this is doing is checking to see whether or not the value is less than one and if it is from here what we're going to be doing is simply setting the player's health so drag that over to true, we're going to leave false at nothing at the moment because we don't want to do anything if the player's got full health. And then if we go ahead and then from here get another reference to health, hook this up, sorry, if we hook health up to float plus float, so float plus float, and then the value for the top one is going to be health, and then the second one is not going to be a random variable. Like I said earlier on, we're going to have a health regen rate and we're also going to have a mana regen rate. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a variable and I'm just going to call this health regen. And then from here in the top right hand corner, I'm going to change the variable type to float so that it's a numeric value. And then with this, I'm just going to get a reference to it and I'm going to hook it up into the bottom now. So what this is essentially is doing is checking to see whether or not the player has got less than full health and if it is, what it's going to do, it's going to add the original value plus the health regen value as well. So if we was to, for example, set this to something like um, 0 0.1, it's going to add 10% of the health. And then if we go ahead and with our talent tree later on, change it to something like 0 0.2, it's then going to add twice as much and it just gives us a little bit more control over everything that we're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this rate for now to 0.05 just so it's a little bit of regen for the player but not too much. And now there's one last thing that I'm going to do after this is I want to check to see now whether or not the player has actually gone over the maximum amount of health and then just set it down to the full health if possible. So what I'm going to do now then once again is float and this time 
I am going to look to see whether or not it is greater than 1. And then get our health. So if it has gone, up, gone over 1 after getting that little health boost from the regeneration, what we're going to do is simply get our health. So we're going to set it and then hook this up to true. And then from here, we are simply just going to set it to 1. And that is it. It's as simple as that. Now, at the moment, this is going to run every single tick, so it's going to run really quickly. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. If I press play, you can see how quickly my health went up there. That's not exactly what I'm looking to do. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to drag all of my health regeneration stuff over just a little bit. And then before the branch, I'm actually going to slot in a quick little delay here. And with this delay, we're just going to set the duration to two seconds. Now, one other thing that you could do that we are going to be doing is instead of using a second value, we're actually going to be creating another variable for health rate. And this is pretty much the speed that it's going to regenerate that amount of health for us. It's starting to get confusing, but it just gives us more control. So what I'm going to do is hook up my regen rate, so the speed. So for us, I'm actually going to make this like 0.2. Uh, so let's say the default value for health rate is actually going to be 0.5 seconds for now anyway. So I'm going to hook this up and then what it's doing, instead of it being 0.2 here, it's just using the 0.5 for my health rate just like that. If I compile this now, press play, you can see the, health, uh, the player's health regenerates a little bit slower and it's a little bit nicer. Now personally, I think that's regenerating way too quick. So what I'm going to do instead is maybe set this health rate to something like 1 instead, or even let's say 2. And we compile it now, press play. Every 2 seconds now, you're going to get that tiny little boost. Um, but I think the boost that it is getting is a bit too much. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my health regen. So this is the amount that is given it each time. And I'm going to set this to 0 0.01 instead. And then I'm going to set my health regen rate to 1. And that should just smoothen it out. So we compile it, press play. You can see now every second it's giving it just a tiny little bit of health. And that's exactly how I want it. So now we're just going to replicate the same thing now for our mana regen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and clear this up a little bit. Just keep it nice and tidy. And then with my sequence for the health regen, I'm going to press control C to select all of this stuff. Sorry, I'm going to select all of it by clicking and dragging. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to comment this so we know exactly what is what. So if we press C to comment it now and then give this the name health regen. And then what I can do now then with this little box, I can drag it anywhere I want and I can move it around. And also because it's got this little label here at the top, I know exactly what it is. And you can also see part of my mesh here has actually come out of that, gone into the box. We don't need that. So now what we're going to do is pretty much duplicate the same thing. So we've got our event tick over here. And this time we are going to create those two variables again. So the first one is going to be mana regen. This is going to be the amount that it regenerates. And the second one is going to be mana rate. And this is going to be how quickly it does all of this. So first things first, drag it out and add a delay. With this delay here, hook your mana rate up into this. So just like that. And then let's just try and match our health rate to our mana rate. So for us, that's just going to be every single one second. So if we compile this and in the variables tab in the bottom left, we can set this to one. So once that we've done this, we're simply going to check to see whether or not the player has already got the maximum value for our mana. So add the branch node and then from here, just type in float and then we're looking for less than. And if it's less than the full value, which is one, and then the default value for mana being hooked up to the top, what it's going to do now is return true if they've got less than full mana. So. What we're going to do now then, if it's true and they have got less, we're simply going to tell it to set mana and then the mana is going to be float plus float. Drag this over just like that. Top value is going to be the original value. And then on top of that, we're just going to add in our mana regen. So that's the amount that it's going to add each time. And once again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and match this mana regen rate 
to our health regen rate. So grab your health regen and look at the value. For me, I set that to 0.01. So I'm going to do the same thing with our mana regen. Just click it, set that to 0.01 and that's all good. And that's now going to regenerate the player's mana. Last thing we need to do is quickly check to see if it's taken them above the maximum value and then set it to one if it is. So from here, what we're looking for is greater than, so float greater than, and then the value for that is just going to be our mana. And then the value that it's got to be greater than to return true is simply going to be one. And that's all good. And then from there, if it is true and they've got more than the maximum value, simply set mana and then we're just going to set that down to 1. Now it's a bit of a confusing system, there's lots to take into here, um, but if you do it enough times you'll sort of start to understand it. But that's everything for our mana regen. So I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the other one. I'm going to select it all and then I'm just going to press uh, C to go ahead and comment that. Then I'm just going to give this the name mana regen. And now we know exactly which one is which. We know which ones are health regen and which ones are mana regen as well. And this is just sort of starting to tidy up our blueprints a little bit as well. And I'm going to try and make those the same size. So, if all has gone well, if I go ahead and compile this now and then press play, you can see that both our health and our mana are regenerating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly use my health, um, you know, my healing ability that we created in the last video. And you can see as I use this, after I use it, my mana is regenerating and that is great. It's working in sync with our system and you know, you can really start to see our RPG game come to life. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video just as much as I have. Once again guys, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out. This series was made possible by you guys supporting me on Patreon. If you want to help create other series like this, then check out my Patreon page in the link in the description.